Hello, everyone. I'm Nathan Rich, aka Huoguo Daowang. Welcome back to another video about Taiwan. So far, we've covered quite a lot of its modern history. After the third version of the Republic of China retreated to the island, the United States took ultimate control and declared it would lie to the public about why. The real reason is it wanted a military base in Asia. The public reason is it supports the self-determinism of the Taiwan people. And that's what we hear so often from comment bots and other thoughtless China experts. The real issue here is Taiwan independence. The Chinese Civil War took place on the mainland and occasionally near Taiwan Island. Even back then, everyone in the world considered Taiwan part of China because it is, and that's never actually been in dispute. When China joined the Korean Civil War, the U.S. changed its outward policy to that of blatant intervention, threatened nuclear war, and created a new Two Chinas concept that no one in all of China, including Taiwan, actually agreed to. Part of creating a puppet state from Taiwan, though, as the U.S. clearly spelled out in publicly available documents, was fostering a Taiwan independence movement. But even this is something most casual observers tend to misunderstand. In a recent poll, a majority of Americans said they support yet another anti-communist interventionist war in China should the mainland attack Taiwan Island. This would be nearly exactly the same as the American intervention in Korea and the American intervention in Vietnam. That, by the way, is widely viewed as the most decisive defeat the United States has ever had in a major war. But this time, some people feel, this time we're going to win. And we have to win for Taiwan because of its long tradition of seeking independence. Indeed, as we research Taiwan after the Qing dynasties collapsed, we do find Taiwan independence mentioned frequently. But it's not exactly in the way you may be thinking. In 1979, Washington shifted diplomatic recognition from Taiwan's capital, Taipei, to Beijing. The mainland would not allow two Chinas or one China and one Taiwan. They insisted on having one China. The United States recognizes the government of the People's Republic of China as a sole legal government of China. Within this context, the people of the United States will maintain unofficial relations with the people of Taiwan. The question is, are they defensive without launching a full-scale attack upon the Chinese mainland and threatening the peace of the entire world? The government of the United States of America acknowledges the Chinese position that there is but one China and Taiwan is part of China. Both sides agreed that there was only one country called China. They just disagreed what it was. Was it a right-wing country called the Republic of China or a communist country called the People's Republic of China? Any attempt to bring about Taiwan's independence will trigger a fight to the end in recognizing the People's Republic of China, that it is a single government of China. We are recognizing simple reality. In 1967, there were around 9 million native Taiwanese people, according to the New York Times. They mentioned again, very clearly, that the government of Taiwan, by the way, did not in any way consider itself outside of China or a different China or independent. The Taiwan government was proactively arresting or executing any and all people who dared stand up for the one thing it absolutely didn't want, independence. People from free China who went to the free United States and advocated for Taiwan independence were tried for a sedition. This kind of thing hardly makes any sense to people across the world who so flippantly want to invade China to promote Taiwan independence. Indeed, if you survey every anti-Chinese activist, be they middle school English teachers or even kindergarten English teachers, I bet zero of them, having not yet seen this video, will have ever formulated a cohesive thought about Taiwan independence. I mean, they know it's a good thing, they just don't know that Taiwan fought so hard against it for so long. That's because the messages they accept about China are cartoon-level drivel. There is no room for historical accuracy, nor for thoughtful discussion about what's good or right for the nation of China. Those kinds of thought patterns are forbidden. If they weren't forbidden in the far-right internet bubble, people would need to think about what they mean by Taiwan independence and by what right or method should such independence be granted or enforced? 
You see, for nearly all of Taiwan's history, Taiwan independence meant exactly one thing. The local indigenous tribes of Taiwan wanting independence from the Chinese mainland's rule. That struggle for independence came in waves, again and again over the long history. Since again, long before the U.S. even existed. But with the United States' explicit assistance, that struggle was finally, after hundreds of years, completely crushed. Again and again, the U.S. supported the Chinese mainlanders' outright suppression of Taiwan independence movements by any means necessary. Any means usually carried out by secret military courts. There are hardly any native Taiwanese left in the world today, compared to how many there were just a few decades ago. Around 2 or 3 percent of the island are natives by some estimates. The vast majority are now Han Chinese and obviously a mix thereof. After the decades of U.S.-sponsored and supported genocide against indigenous people, the media machine did what it does best. Small leaks here and there to feign anyone anywhere doing anything about that history. But no one ever has. And maybe, you, you might say, if the communists, who repeatedly and incessantly went on and on about preserving non-Han traditions and ethnicities, Maybe, you say, that they would have been worse. I, I don't know. We don't know. What we do know is the actual fascists were in charge, and they carried out targeted extermination campaigns against the, all of the non-Han population, while the U.S. supported its every move, and U.S. media downplayed the genocide at every turn. The Republic of China, KMT, were relentless in their mass murder of the indigenous Taiwanese, Eventually, not even bothering to have those secret military court hearings anymore. Instead, just outright executing them immediately. They knew it was against the interests of the United States to let news of this secret genocide off the island. They also knew that the United States itself had plans to wield the indigenous people's independence movement against Chiang Kai-shek if he dared to stand up to the United States. But he never found the courage to do so. The locals struggled to represent themselves in the most oppressive Chinese society of the modern era, the post-war fascist dictatorship on Taiwan Island. In 1970, a failed assassination attempt against Chiang Kai-shek's son took place in the United States. The culprits were Taiwan pro-democracy activists. That's right, being pro-democracy and pro-independence meant being completely opposed to the KMT. Now things start to come into focus. Because if you believe in Taiwan independence, you've got to explain to me what you mean by that. Because I'm pretty sure that before watching this video, most of you had no idea what you even meant. If you mean that Taiwanese people should have independence from the mainland Chinese, well then that's at this point a racial or ethnic argument. And although it is rooted in much history, I don't think it means what you think it means. Because for Taiwan to have that kind of independence, the KMT, the entire government, and nearly every Han Chinese person would need to be expelled from the island, which of course would devastate the economy and undo progress in terms of quality of life. So is that what you mean by Taiwan independence? Because that's what nearly 100% of everyone in the past meant when they said it. If you mean that, I suppose my next question would be, why does Taiwan of all places in the entire world get your focus? What about the Okinawans? What about every other indigenous people's independence movements in the entire world? At what point in history are we resetting to, by the way? Should the United States dissolve as it was built on existing indigenous people's territories after the mainland Chinese had already been in Taiwan, by the way? I'm not really understanding this argument any more than you are, if this is your argument. But maybe you believe in something new. A new thing also confusingly called Taiwan independence something that started around the 1990s. Maybe what you mean is, whoever is in Taiwan now, they should be independent from the central government on the mainland. This has nothing at all to do with history, as there is zero historical support for this concept at all, anywhere. It's also a total betrayal of everything Chiang Kai-shek believed in. It's a complete admission that the ROC doesn't legally occupy Taiwan, as it is in fact an admission that they are not representatives of China, the country that the entire world agrees Taiwan is in. The fact that this would completely discredit the ROC having any claim to Taiwan is not my view. That's the view of the United States government, who have maintained control of the island for a few decades now. 
the nationalist claim to be the sole government of China provides the rationale by which the regime is able to maintain a monopoly of power on the island. So if you're rejecting all that and saying now that the entire time they've been operating completely illegally, but now suddenly the island itself should be an independent country, that's fine with me. I, honestly, I'm totally fine with this opinion. But just so you're clear, what you're saying is screw the local Taiwanese people, they get nothing. You know who deserves to be in charge of the island? The escaped fascist armies of the Chinese mainlanders. That's who you support. And again, fine if that's your position, just spell it out clearly. Don't hide and weasel around about it. Here's what needs to happen for that recognition of Taiwan as a suddenly different country than China to go through. First, the mainland Chinese rulers down there would need to declare they no longer have a claim on the entirety of China. Then they need to declare they are independent from China entirely. Then they need to lobby the international community for recognition as a new country. When they get the majority of recognized country support, or at the very least, more support than the PRC's claim on the island, then they will be considered an independent country. Yes, that likely means war. Yes, it's true that global recognition of Taiwan existing as independent has steadily gone down for decades. Yes, fighting for the right of one group of non-indigenous people to govern an island rather than another group of non-indigenous people is somewhat of a boring, emotionless cause unrelated to morality or ethics. Just really more about preference. But like I said, I respect your right to fight for it, even if you don't really know what you're fighting for. Back in 1971, U.S. President Nixon had finally, after much effort, managed to reach the high ups in the Chinese government. They agreed to pursue normalized relations one step at a time. One of the most important issues from the Chinese side was the U.S. needed to abandon any official support of Taiwan as being independent. And that's exactly what the U.S. did. More on that in an upcoming video. If you're someone who pays attention to China, especially Chinese history and facts, you may have noticed some people claim I'm a pretty good source of information, at least on where to start your research. If you watched this video and you didn't know some of these facts already, feel free to support the production costs of these videos and my time by monthly donations at Patreon, Subscribestar, PayPal, etc. If you feel like this video was something more interesting than the ill-conceived cheap garbage content out there, support it or just share it. That's fine too. And if you think I'm done talking about Taiwan, you're wrong. There's a whole lot more to say. Until next time, I'm Nathan Rich. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.